So what if somebody says it doesn't have a spine? <laughs> I agree. You might be like, you know what, it's going too far. It doesn't have a spine, he's a wood. He doesn't know how to, you know what I mean? Like, oh, somebody says something to his wife, he's like, nah, nah, bro. <laughs> he doesn't say anything, woman's like defending. And you always need a leader from the front, leader from the back. And if the male, and this is typical, the male response, all this kind of like hammering of the boys, is to take the back position. Let's just sit in the back. You know, smooth ride. Let's just sit in the back. Everything goes. So who goes to the front? Mm. And the woman goes to the front. And she's like leading. And she can lead pretty good. And I'm actually going to say, women should be in both positions as well. But a woman leading from the front, if you have someone who's from the back, she starts to resent her husband tries to resent her husband, husband, and then you get things like pornography happening and stuff like that. You just don't have attraction when a woman in the front of the man is being a boy the back. Now, for women, and I know I've pointed a lot of this and trying to get some anger from the sisters. <laughs> women should be both as well, leadership from the front and back. Prophet said, Kullukum Brahim. Every one of you is a shepherd, and every one of you is responsible for their flock. Hence, every one of you is a leader. And every one of you, at the same time, is a sheep. It's part of the flock. It just depends on what angle you're looking at. So, in a, in a, in a relationship, let's suppose a husband marries, uh, or a man marries a woman, and she's like leader, leading from the back all the time. Or she's just in the back. He's like, come on, honey. And she's like, it's alright, whatever you want. And maybe the house is messed up. Her studies are not going so great. Her husband feels like she has no goal. She's just kind of like a vegetable, right, in the house. She's not leading from the front. And you know that you'll have problems like that. Person's not attracted to this to the woman that you married because she's just always in the back. She takes no decision making. She's not um, organized. She's not goal oriented, and so on and so forth. Now, for a woman that always in the front as well, she basically becomes the, um, this is really the next terms for this, leading from the front to the women. If the woman leads from the front, and she's basically going to, you know, bite the head off her husband all the time, it's always this is the way it is, this is the way it is, this is the way it is, then you get the man basically just like surrendering in the end. <laughs> or a fight breaking out. Hence, the woman sometimes, and, I, and this is my recommendation, um, for the sisters, is when you have to do something, you realize, oh, your husband needs to be doing it. Tell your husband, husband says, why don't you go get, you know, go get the groceries. And then the woman responds by saying, well, why don't you get up? I'd prefer to be the woman. And actually take that step and push your husband to take some responsibility. Take responsibility, don't keep doing the thing for, um, for the husband, but instead take a back position and let your husband take responsibility. When we hire people, or we're dealing with people, one of the first things that I do, one of the first things, in fact, this is like a recommendation that I learned, is the first time you hire somebody, don't put them in the back, leadership from the back, put them directly to the front. Give them a task, give them like 10 days, one week, one month, whatever it is that you're giving it, and let them take it fully. You're like, nobody's going to check up on you. Nobody's going to say anything to you. You are fully responsible for this. In 30 days, we will review what you did. And to see if this person has the skill to lead from the front or not. I'm saying in a marriage, women need to give their husbands that kind of, that kind of room to fail or succeed or something like that. But the husband needs to be responsible for things. Women not always taking it from them. If a person does choose to lead from the front like this, and now the talk is more of a lot of brothers that are leading from the back or are holding those kind of back calls, and I wish they'd lead from the back, sometimes they're just in the back. Maybe they're in the middle somewhere, and they're not really leaders, not in their own life, not in the community, they're just kind of like shallow. And I'll tell you, in Toronto, this is a big problem. In Toronto, specifically. When you look at the strength of the sister, and you look at the overall picture, not you brothers that are here. <laughs> the ones that didn't come, and you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like, there's just no goal the way that, you know, the way that it should be. <clears throat> if a person does take that type of responsibility, does move forward, does lead from the front number one, 
in that it's very easy to get married. Very easy. So people that will say, oh, you know what, I'm, uh, you know, all the good ones are taken or something like that. No, it's because you're just not man enough. Be man everything. That's number one, marriage becomes very easy. You wouldn't have, like, oh, I need to get married. All the aunts will come looking for you. Come to them. They'll be like, this guy, he has goals, he has this, he has that. You know, we have, you know, here are our daughters for at least to get married. That's number one. Number two is, if a person does take that responsibility, their internal alarm clock, this is something amazing that a lot of times I've created within us, it's, it's pain. If a person, if a man isn't a man, they'll have pain. It'll hurt. Hence, you notice that I brought up the issue of pornography. Because a man not able to attract a woman has to basically go to a computer and just put in your credit card or something like that. And, and that's the, the path that's going. A man not able to attract a woman, they fall into pornography because of the issue. Okay? So the second benefit, and, and obviously pornography, does that person get, you know, they live there like, oh yeah, I'm involved with pornography, I'm so excited, and stuff like that. <laughs> right? It's pain. Like, Nisa, pain, it builds up in the person, the intensity just builds and builds and builds. Hence, when a person does take on a responsibility, does take on a responsibility like full force, their alarm clock shuts off because the body realizes that this man is actually seeking to be a man. They've got a football and they're now running to an end zone. They have chosen an end zone and now this motivation, this goal, achievement, the adrenaline starts pumping. And when somebody is in that type of zone, other brothers know it and other sisters know it. Correct? Okay. So your internal alarm clock, that pain that you feel, shuts down. And that's the case. The third thing is that the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when somebody becomes a leader, one of the great benefits of being a good leader and a, a leader to goodness is that your reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compounded. As the Prophet said, the person who calls to good gets the same reward, reward as the person who does the good, without diminishing from their reward. Hence the person that's basically saying, let's say it's after Salah, after Salah. So brothers, let's say they pray, they're pretty good brothers if they're praying together. Ten brothers pray together, they're walking away, they're chatting. Alpha male brother turns around to all of them and says, let's pray our Salah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay. All right. And they all pray their Salah. Somebody just led them to some good, correct? Or somebody said, hey, let's do that in cap this year. And that type of leadership among other men, the person gets the reward for doing it himself, and they also get the reward of those who follow without diminishing from their reward. Let's look at myths that men have about marriage. I know women, they get all excited about this. I did this also on, on the internet. What myths men have about marriage and what myths women have about marriage, and in both sections, the women responded. <laughs> And I noticed that with the women uh, talking about myths men have about marriage, it's very long in detail. Both for themselves, it's kind of like, there's like two. <laughs> so the list I have for the men is ten. The list I have for the women, I've, I've tried to flesh it out with five. Okay. Number one. Myth number one. Actually, let's, let's count down back. The top ten myths that men have about marriage. Number ten. That non-Muslim women are more attractive than Muslims. Okay? So this thing, and I've heard this from brothers. They're like, how come non-Muslim women, they're like, they're so pretty, they're so... But what about Muslim women? Now this guy's got a problem because it's dispelling the myth. Because a woman is a woman. It's the same, it's the same gender. Yet, one has... Um, the, uh, the assistance of Maybelline and Revlon and all of that. And the other one has chosen to hide their beauty or protect their beauty. Now it's interesting what the word protect comes from, or protect, protection from who? From a jerk brother that thinks that an honest woman looks better than a Muslim woman. Someone who has that type of thinking, that in order to get beyond that, this person would need to be of, you know, have more deeper 